in three, two, one. Are we live? I think it is. Oh my. Boom! And we're live. Lewis, or you want this tweet? Here it comes. Ready for it? I, I hope that Jack Dorsey has has built up his uh, neural network and AI algorithms because the the amount of traffic we're going to get off this tweet, <laughs> it's going to over, overload the Twitter servers. hope they're using Amazon Azure. Here we go. Tweet sent. There it is, Lewis. The people are coming in. They're piling in. We got Ulysses Martinez here saying, hey, y'all. Lewis, you look... You look confused. What's going on? Well, so somebody just put the uh, giveaway on the Twitter there. I was just kind of shocked by it. Oh, wow. Look at He's that. He's got the keys to the Twitter. Does it go to Cultimac? <laughs> <laughs> Does it go to like some random Amazon page? We got Neil Potty. He says, hey, y'all. Todd Ellis is here. Yo. Ewan Chucky. Hello from Thailand. Wow. Carlos. Mejia. Hey, y'all. I'm working out. So don't tell my boss. So I w- don't grunt too loud, man. We're trying to do a show here. Uh, Boti XP. I'm so addicted to your show. Well, that's a good thing. Troy Verde. Boom. Todd Ellis. Nice audio. Thank you. Uh, Hugh Rollins. Lewis has audio issues. Come on, Lewis. What? Get your. Get your yeah, Lewis said a thing. I fixed it. <laughs> it's still your. It's still your fault, but I did fix it. Thank you for that. Adam Broussard. Guess what Adam Broussard wants me to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to hear nothing about it, Lewis. We got Barry Rose here. Hey, y'all, where's the menu items? Oh, yeah, hide it behind the notch. Oh, MacBook Pro jokes. Jeff Druin is here. Sup, guys? Nick Potty Fix, thank you for that heads up. Yeah, I accidentally. I, yeah, look, it's because of Skype. This is a little inside baseball here, but Skype... Uh, it puts everyone's audio, except for mine, on each individual person's audio tracks. So I have to like mute one of the tracks when we go in, and, and sometimes I have to unmute it, depending on what scenario we're in. So if I don't unmute it, then you're hearing both tracks, and both tracks have both audio tracks, which is crazy. I, I put in a feature request for Skype. I'm like, you guys got to fix this. This is crazy. You can separate the video feeds, but you can't separate the audio feeds. This is totally insane, but they haven't fixed it. It's been like a year and a half. Alrighty, we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week, and we got not a lot of time, so we got to jump right into it because uh, you guys got to go in what? An hour? 45 minutes? An hour? Yeah. How long do we have? 30 to 45 minutes. Call 30. starts at 2. 45 minutes tax. Tops. That, that the call starts at 2, Lewis says. You got an hour and a half. I think it's at 1.30. The earnings report goes out at 1.30. And the call. It's handling that. Call okay. itself starts at 2. Oh, you got plenty of time. Look at this. We got an hour oh, and a half. Man, so much time. But I know that <clears throat> Leander has to have 30 minutes to get juiced before the uh, <laughs> call starts, right? <laughs> lunch. <laughs> it does require a series yeah, of injections. Yeah, I said. Lunch. Okay. Liquid lunch. <sighs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and queue up Mrs. You-Know-Who. This is going to be a fun show. I, I, I've got some fun things to talk about with the, with you all. we got a lot of great stories this week. And uh, the performance differences between the Intel MacBook Pro and... <laughs> the M1 Pro, MacBook Pro. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! They're insane. They're insane. I, I, I. So let's let's queue up, Mrs. You know who, so we can get this thing going. Oh, Mrs. D. <laughs> Mrs. D, we got a hot one for you this week. It's gonna be a M1 MacBook Pro versus the Intel MacBook Pro. Eh, I want to talk about lemon meringue. Well, we can talk about that. Maybe in the pre or in the post show chat, but for now we gotta talk about MacBook Pros and we gotta get rolling. So warm up those vocal cords. And me, 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 me. And let's get this thing rolling because we gotta we're gonna run out of time for the financial make call. It start. <laughs> we gotta get this show rolling so I can uh, be done in time to watch my stock price crater when the uh, financials <laughs> come pouring in. Because the Apple stock is actually doing pretty good at this very moment, but. When the actual details of the quarter come in, I know it's just going to absolutely crater. Yeah. Right. So I got to be. Once they, once they reveal that they only sold, you know, eighty billion dollars. It, it won't matter. It won't matter, Lewis. It doesn't ever matter. They ha- they keep having the best quarter ever. It was. It's not going to matter. They're going to just. The stock's going to crater. Okay. Here we. Hello and welcome. 
Welcome to Cocasty Best 30 Plus. I'm an album conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host. The eyebrow raise. Look at it. That takes practice. Everyone allows you to join me today. He's already been banned by several pubs in the Facebook metaverse. And Cupertino's virtual security has been instructed to keep his AI projection off the premises. He's the founder of Cult of Mac. Leonard Cady is here. Boy, they acted quick. Also with us. He's currently building out the new Metaverse Cultimac headquarters with state-of-the-art writer's cage, complete with ill-tempered robotic dogs, escape prevention, AI plasma turrets, and the other tools needed to keep the writing staff well-motivated and cranking out the stories. He is the managing editor of Cultimac. Lewis Wallace is here. So meta. <laughs> Did you guys catch the news, Leander? Do you even know what we're talking about? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, Alex uh, Heath. Yeah, our old friend Alex he, he broke the story originally. Cow, and he had a he had an interview with um, he had an interview with Zuckerberg for The Verge. I did. Did you watch it? Uh, I, I don't think it was uh, broadcast. It was just a phone interview. They wouldn't they wouldn't okay. let they wouldn't let him do video with Zuckerberg. They're they like, conducted oh. it in the metaverse. <laughs> phone calls <laughs> enough. Yeah, <laughs> they all they they each had Oculuses on. They met in like some smoky digital back room. Hello, Alex. <laughs> <Heath>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i was just thinking like if you got those two guys together in the same room i don't think in the history of the world there'd be there'd be two more hairless people more hairless people in the same room together it's like they're they're clones of each other so that'd be interesting just to see that so yeah our uh i our previous cult of mac member Alex e. Heath just had a big scoop with Facebook. Finally, all the Facebook reporting has has paid off for him, because he's been reporting on Facebook for years. And I'm like, dude, like Facebook, like does anyone know what Facebook is doing? <laughs> I don't think so. But he <laughs> stayed he stayed with it. He was diligent, and now he's talking to Zuck. So there there you go. It took him somewhere. He was right. I was wrong. That's the first time that's happened. <laughs> let's let's jump in the show here because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, so. I thought we could lead off with some discussion on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro versus the Intel MacBook Pro benchmarks. And all I got to say is I hope you guys are sitting down ready for what I'm about to share with you because these these are truly insane. Like probably the biggest performance increases from a generation to a generation that I've seen. Uh, and this is just this is just the uh, the M1 Pro. So the M1 Max benchmarks versus the Intel i9 benchmarks are are still on the way and those are going to be probably even crazier so basically it's like the the base Intel MacBook Pro the last generation versus the base M1 Pro MacBook Pro and uh, even even the differences now between those two base models is totally insane and we're not even talking about the M1 Max yet so things are, are, are exciting for the MacBook Pro we'll talk about that um, let's see here we are also going to talk about the new AirPods 3. Lander has them in. You can't even see him. Look at him. You can't even see Oh, there. I now you can't see him because he's turning his head. But uh, look how sleek and small those things are. They look so much better. Oh, my gosh. So uh, he's going he's gonna to give a, um, a very enthusiastic review of those, I'm sure. And uh, we will wrap up with a little discussion about an Apple television. I'm not talking Apple TV, the little black puck i'm talking about a full-on apple television because I, I i mentioned this last week i think we need one and uh well i don't want to get ahead of myself here before we dive into the show let me send it over to old lewis wallace to talk about the cultimax store we're doing a uh, special promotion right now very spooky promotion wouldn't you say lewis oh man it's uh <laughs> very very scary good deals uh <laughs> scary good the, deals uh... i like that <laughs> Uh, yeah, you go to uh, store.cultimac.com. You can't miss it. There's a giant thing that says Halloween sale. Click on that. You see all these things on sale. We got uh, loads of stuff in here. We got Apple Watch, little bumper cases so you don't uh, you know destroy your favorite wearable. We've got all kinds of phone cases. Uh, right now, I guess it's uh, up to 15% off stuff from uh, Form Function Form, Limited 77, and Switch Easy. Uh, 10% off Juke, which you, if you've seen the Juke ones, those rarely go on sale. And the Juke juke pads, so those are some of the best ones we have in there, the really high-class kind of things. Also from Elkson, Mifa, Bacardo, and Nyloon, all these bands and, and things available. Uh, only goes through Monday, so, uh, you know, hurry up and get your uh, treat before it's too late. Dude, I like these uh, Elkson bumper cases. 
they make your Apple Watch look like a really beefy Casio. That's kind of a cool look. There's all kinds of great yeah, stuff. You can get a yeah, you can Look at those things. They do a special Casio face, too. You can download it. It's a bit of a rigmarole. Oh, but, uh, yeah. We talked about this before, didn't we? Yeah, it's super cool. I've got one here. It's, um, you know, they're nice. A, a little, uh, you know, plastic case. And it really does protect it. They're good. It's, yeah, it, super rugged. You know, <clears throat> in case people look at it and go, oh, well, 10, 15%, that's not big a sale. Well, these things are... Uh, reasonably play, priced to begin with these these things i mean these mifa watch bands it's, it's pronounced mifa right m-i-f-a sure MIFA. sure I'll take it. Uh, sure let's go with that uh 10 percent off but you know it's only 25 bucks to begin with and they're nice they're they're like a, a nice leather band for 25 bucks five stars reviews that's as many stars five, as you can get five, too there, there, there are no more stars okay. there's no more stars to give that's there. all there is <laughs> we have to consider raising the stars in the store just for that that series of products just so we can get some more stars on there all right so uh store.cultofmac.com store.cultofmac.com catch the sale it ends monday lots of beautiful accoutrements for your apple watch your iphone all sorts of stuff all the stuff that we really like all righty let's dive right into it so macbook pro the new macbook pro they're out people are getting them all the benchmarks are coming in and i want to give a shout out to max tech so if you're unfamiliar with max tech they are a uh a YouTube channel that just does tons of benchmarks and they've been benchmarking the H E double hockey sticks out of the new MacBook pro and comparing it to the old MacBook pro, the Intel version. And I was just watching their video. So they have two out right now. Uh, one is comparing the base version MacBook pro, the Intel versus the M one pro. And I think they had a new one just come out today. Yeah. Okay. So this is the new one that just came out today. The M1 Max versus the uh, Intel 16-inch MacBook Pro. So these are the 16-inch models, I should say. And just benchmarking the heck out of these things and showing the differences between the two. And the differences are astounding. The, the, the differences in performance between the last-gen Intel and the current-gen are beyond what I had what, what I had hoped or dreamed for, quite honestly. Like, that's not hyperbole. Like, it really is surprisingly good. And I feel bad for people that bought the MacBook Pro uh, the Intel version, maybe like four, five weeks ago before these new versions just got released because you're that's like the worst spot to be in, right? No one listening to this show would ever do that because you would know that the new ones were on the way. <laughs> but like there are normies out there who don't listen to this podcast, don't care about tech stuff, and they go and they buy the new MacBook Pro, and then Apple comes out with the M1 version, the M1 Pro, M1 Max. They increase the performance in some huge degree and they also drop the price on the top tier <laughs> models oh my gosh dude can you imagine how pissed oh. off you'd be if you if, oh, if that were you because i think they give you a two-week window to uh to swap them out <laughs> but uh so so let's just dive into some of uh of these details so the 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 benchmarks across the board are just kind of crazy so first and foremost um this is i just want to lay the groundwork here so I'm com they're comparing the the base 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro with the base Intel 2019 MacBook Pro. Okay, so these are the two models that they're comparing, and a lot of people get the base one; they don't upgrade. So I think this is kind of a cool comparison too. So they tore it apart, and they noticed that like the speakers are like way bigger. They did a sound test, and the speakers, even in the video, you could tell are much better on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. People are they sound much people fuller and bassier. Yeah, go ahead. I saw people on Twitter saying that, um, you know, some someone said um, I'm listening to my uh, my speakers on my MacBook Pro instead of my Sonos. They're that good. Come on. Uh, yeah, those yeah, people no. are insane. <laughs> <laughs> but then I saw another one. Someone was listening to an Ari Ariana Grande uh, Dolby Atmos video, and you can't see in the video, but it says that there's a there's a uh, some laughter at one point in the track. Someone laughs, uh -huh. and he says that the speakers throw it out about a foot away from the the. Um, the computer itself huh so you can actually hear it coming from over here Sound it, and, and there was two people and they were going crazy over this thing because you couldn't hear it on the on the you know because the microphone didn't pick up that the yeah. special thing but you know these guys were saying oh wow you know like the speakers are actually putting out sound over here on the left and the right They're pretty impressive this speaker system is better than the one at the imax theater near my house it's definitely better than that <laughs> and it's already built in your macbook pro <laughs> click my video yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is like some of the stuff you kind of have to take with a grain of salt it's like yeah i know you want clicks on your videos so you're gonna say like that's some great. outrageous things you know what i mean yeah all right so the other thing that uh they highlighted is uh the difference in uh well the size differences first of all 
like you can tell like the the like the current MacBook Pro is a little bit thicker but but that thickness allows for them to to just build in more features. And you know what's funny is I was looking at this and I was like, "You know what? This really reminds me of the G4." So I did some research on this. I want to show you guys something. I think I found the computer that Apple's industrial design team based the new MacBook Pro design off of. I think I think it's irrefutable evidence. Here you go. You ready for this? So here is the new MacBook Pro, right? It's got that beautiful, beautiful black keyboard, and uh, it's got the thickness, right? It has little feet, and they've squared up the design on the bottom part of the MacBook Pro to make it a little bit beefier, and you can see that design represented on the on the sides of the computer with the lid closed, and I just kept thinking to myself, this looks a lot like the G4 Mac, or the G4 PowerBook, and that's true, but there's a specific model, I think, that they copied for this design, and it's right here. This is the uh, the G4 PowerBook Titanium. And just check out this picture. Like, here's the front of it. And you can tell it has, like, that squared off design, right? It's just like the uh, the new MacBook Pro does. And, uh, and then check this out. Look at that beautiful black keyboard. Now, that gives it away. They were, I think they were trying to emulate this design as, like, a, as a, a return to their roots. They're building a computer that's beefier. It's got more ports. It's got more utility, and this, and it's got their own custom silicon. It's like this is the computer. This is the one they were copying. It's, it's a return to their roots. And so, design-wise, I think they emulated the design based off this G4 PowerBook Titanium model with the black keyboard, which is why Apple blacked out the aluminum before uh, below the keyboard because the keys are a little bit too small to cover the entire deck. So, in order to not have that silver from the deck showing through they had to make the deck black to make it look like whoops like that so that was their design inspiration right there just a little aside for you all that's what i was thinking about as i was watching some of this uh some of this footage so they go on to talk about the the webcam like the webcam quality is it is like a night and day difference before it looked like you were broadcasting from a cave in afghanistan and now it's like bright and clear and beautiful. It looks like something from your iPhone. So drastically enhanced webcam performance. It's 1080p now. It's got the computational HDR stuff going on. I mean, it just looks much, much better. Okay. Uh, the new display was another, uh, one of the other parts of the new MacBook Pro that I thought was, was really promising. So the new display has 30% more pixels than it did before. It's almost a 4K display, just a hair underneath. And the thing that was more surprising than that was the quality of the image that they were able to get out of these new displays. I mean, so it's a, it's much brighter, obviously, but the the black levels on the display are are crazy. Like on on the older MacBook Pro, because it doesn't have mini LED uh, uh, backlighting, you like when you have those gray bars above and below. A, uh, an image or like a movie or something, they kind of look grayish because there's there's light bleeding through. And on the new MacBook Pros, they look almost completely black. And then the highlights are much brighter. So like the specular highlights are much better. So they moved from regular backlighting to mini LED backlighting. And the difference in visual acuity and like color and, and brightness and contrast is just hugely, hugely improved. So if you're editing HDR content or maybe you're just watching HDR movies, this is now going to be one of the best screens that you have in, in your house for, for that type of thing. The SSDs are now literally twice as fast. Uh, they were clocking 4,500 megabytes per second, megabytes per second write speeds and 5,000 megabytes per second read speeds. That's literally twice as fast as the, the uh, previous Intel MacBook Pro. Here we get to performance. The, uh, the single core performance, again, this is the M1 Pro versus the, uh, the previous base Intel CPU, the i7, is 65% faster for the M1 Pro, okay? And 250% faster in multi-core. So you're getting huge performance gains across the, uh, the CPU. I'm sorry, is this boring? I know I'm just reading facts, but like, <laughs> like these facts are mind-blowing. The performance benchmarks are truly mind blowing. Again, I'm pulling this from um, all the benchmarks done on this Max Tech, Max Tech video, which and, uh, and these are all yeah. Go ahead. The, these are all the the M1 Pro, right? Not the M1 Max. Yes, is this is correct? not. This is not even the M1 Max. <laughs> <This is> a... <laughs> so they just released a 
M1 Max versus the um, the higher end Intel MacBook Pro 16 inch today. So I haven't even watched it yet, but I'm sure the differences are are even more uh, exciting for the M1 Max because you have the the double ProRes render engine, you have uh, the extra 16 GPU core. Or so, and one of the other things you, I'll talk about here in a moment is is so he did all these tests with the MacBook Pros unplugged from power and the battery life and the wattage used by the M1 Pro MacBook Pro is so vastly better than the Intel machine. It, it's like, it, it, I'm, it, it couldn't be more drastic. The Intel machine was struggling for juice like halfway through this barrage of tests. And these are intense tests that really are heavy on the GPU and the CPU and everything. And then the M1 Pro MacBook Pro basically made it through all the tests and still had battery life, you know, even at the very end. It just it just sipped at its battery power throughout the entire range of tests. And these are heavy duty performance tests, right? Which which was was what was amazing. Uh let's see here. So Geekbench. So the 16 core M1 Pro versus the um the the 5300 m these are the GPUs, right? So in Geekbench score. The M1 Pro had a 100% increase in performance and used only 22 watts versus the 5300M's 53 watts during during some of these tests. Right, so having using half the wattage and 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 doubling the performance uh, during during the test, the Intel CPU jumped to uh, around 96 degrees Celsius, so it would burn your lap. Right, you could you'd have a hard time using this on your lap. Uh, the M1 Pro uh, was hovering at around 46 degrees. Now, I know of Intel desktop CPUs that that uh, their base temp is 46 degrees. So, the 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 M1 Pro was barely getting hot at all. It was like it's like getting warm. That's basically it. And and throughout the barrage of these tests, he was like, the the fans on the Intel machine are at full blast, right? And the M1 Pro fans would rarely even come on, and when they could, you'd have to put your ear next to them just to hear them. Sorry, Lewis, what were you saying? No, I just said, you know, that's really hot. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised. I, I guess I didn't have any idea how hot these things get. That's why people were running them in the freezer, Lewis. Remember that test? <laughs> yeah, that's why yeah, people yeah. were. That was the problem with the Intel machines: is the 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 CPUs got so hot, and the GPUs got so hot that the, the machine had to thermal throttle itself to not fizzle itself burst out burst into flames burst into flames <laughs> melt into the t1000 right there on your lap right and then it goes gonna go looking hurt. for john connor right there in your lap so <laughs> so these are running i would say these run warm and uh in, in these geekbench tests the intel fans are running at 6000 rpms and the m1 pro uh, fans are running at uh, 1500 rpms and when you look at the actual video footage you can see that the actual fans on the uh, let's see if I can pull this up. The fans is it this video? I oh, know it might be. Whoops, it might be this one. The fans are noticeably larger. Like to me, they look like they were probably fifty percent to maybe even a hundred percent larger on the. Here we go on the on the M1 Pro versus the Intel. And let me share my screen with you guys so you can actually see what I'm looking at here. Look at this high tech show that we're having here. So on the <laughs> left here, you have the M1 Pro fan. And you can see it's it's vastly larger than the than the Intel there, right? So they just, uh, as John Turnus said, they they base this new design on this new thermal system to make it run really cool and quiet. And you can see it's it's vastly larger. Okay, okay. Look look at this. Our concurrent viewers are going up. People like listening to a man yes. just talk about MacBook Pro <laughs> specs. I, I I feel proud. We're talking specs here. We're talking. We're talking benchmark performance differences between the M1 Pro MacBook Pro and the Intel MacBook Pro, and they are startling. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's see here. Moving on to the Max Tech Xcode benchmark. Okay, so Max Tech has their own benchmark that they've designed to basically compile a bunch of code. Right, I know a lot of people will be interested in this, and this is when we get into like real world tests, like how fast does logic work? How fast does this Final Cut Pro work in certain situations. That's where we're going now. Okay, so this is the Max Tech Xcode benchmark. Intel did the compile that uh, of their script in 280 seconds. The fans were blazing. The M1 Pro did the same test in 104 seconds. So what is that? 
it's almost one third the time and the fans are silent the entire time. Okay. One third the time. Light room. Light room performance. They did a 50 raw image export. The M1 Pro, actually the, the Intel, we'll do the Intel first. Three minutes and 47 seconds to, to export 50 raw images. The M1 Pro did it in a minute and 23 seconds. So what is that? It's almost a third. It, it, it's it's, yeah. it's two thirds faster, I guess, right? Uh, Intel, Sheesh. at this point in the barrage of tests, was at 5% battery. Okay, So they had to <laughs> plug the Intel in. The M1 Pro was still at 52% battery life. Okay, Which is crazy. Because I, I do Final Cut Pro editing, I do Logic editing, and my MacBook Pro will make it... I have the Intel MacBook Pro, the last generation, and I could maybe make it two, three hours doing heavy <coughs> lifting, and then it was toast. The battery's toast. Okay? Uh, Blender test, which I think is 3D rendering. It did the render. The Intel MacBook Pro did the render in 43.43 seconds. The M1 MacBook Pro, nine seconds. Okay. Final wow. Cut Pro. I know a lot of you are interested in Final Cut Pro stabilizing a one minute clip. The Intel machine did the test in 13.8 seconds. M1 Pro, seven seconds. Export of Canon R5 10 bit H.264 422 five minute project. Now, this is where I think El Caney's going to perk up. He's going to be <laughs> like, oh, did someone say 10 bit? H.264422. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see him? He's he like, he, right he, up. he just came right out. He just came alive. He, 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 now, now he's listening. The uh, five minute clip, Intel did that export in 12 minutes, 15 seconds. The M1 Pro did it in three minutes. Three minutes. Here's wow. where things get really interesting, okay? Five minute. Wow, can it get more interesting than this? <laughs> this I've only got two left, and then we'll move on. The five-minute 4K ProRes RAW, this is graded RAW. So, as you know, the M1 Pro has a dedicated media encoder engine for ProRes, and the M1 Max has two ProRes uh, encoder engines, right? So, the Intel machine did this 4K export, five-minute video. Took them, or it took it uh, six minutes, 20 seconds. The M1 Pro did it in a minute and eight seconds. So, these are real-world examples of how much time this machine is going to save you, not to mention at the end of all of these tests, the Intel machine was plugged in and the M1 Pro still had 39% battery life left. So it's just it's just a monster. It's it's even it, it has far exceeded anything that I thought it would do, quite honestly. Seeing seeing these benchmarks. I, if, if there wasn't a video showing the actual results, I, I don't know if I would believe them because they seem like they're too extraordinary to be real. And the fact that they do it all, the M1 Pro does all this while using half the power and maintaining a a battery life that is totally usable throughout the rest of the day is really astounding. So all that to say, it's just a night and day difference. Like if you if you have an an Intel MacBook Pro last generation, you're wondering if you want to if you should upgrade. To me, it's a no brainer. I mean, they brought down the price of the higher end machines by like five or six hundred dollars, so they're more affordable. And the performance is basically like two to three, well, depending on the scenario, like two to three times. And the battery life seems like it's at least double, if not triple, of the Intel machines <laughs> doing real world work. So. I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, like, there it is. How much better? How, how much better do you want? Not to mention, you get all the extra <laughs> ports. You get that beautiful G4 PowerBook aesthetic with the black keyboard deck. Uh, it, you get the SD card slot. I mean, Lewis, what else do you want? What else could I possibly tell you, Lewis? Why do you still look so unimpressed? I, I mean, come on. Uh, you, you know, I've been reading a lot about these things and. Uh honestly like the only negative things i've i've seen i mean all this stuff is mind-blowing the only negative things i've seen is oh, oh i don't like the notch or uh the other yeah. thing is the uh <laughs> the the mag safe cable uh is silver and not space gray with the space gray machine it's not <laughs> matched which i you know honestly mag that's kind gates. of a fair point but uh you know yeah the, these things sound unbelievable <laughs> I, I i can't even imagine you know if i had to do that kind of work and uh, I was looking at those things. I mean, it's, you know, like you're saying, all t time is money, right? So if, if something takes 
one fifth the time, of course you're gonna. I mean, it, it, you'd, I'd go out and get it tomorrow if I was a, a video editor. Yeah, if you're a video editor, it's kind of a no brainer, and and you don't have to even spend a bunch of extra money on the most expensive new MacBook Pro. You could just get a base model and still right, have well, these huge increases in performance. That's that's one of the things that's really, really amazing. I mean, I, I actually, for a second there, I thought maybe you had gotten the, the nomenclature screwed up, you know, which is easy to do since it's MacBook Pro, Pro Max, blah, 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 right? But that's all that stuff you're talking about was the slower of the two machines. Yes, the this is ones. the M1 Pro. So I'm, I'm posting <laughs> these videos in the chat if you guys want to check them out. I'll put links in the show notes. And again, shout out to Max Tech for doing these uh, kinds of reviews. Like, he, he's got one of my favorite channels for benchmarks. Like, he just benchmarks uh, at the performance differences between everything against everything else. And I find that kind of be to, to be really interesting. And uh, he's also he's he's a Washington local, so I like him just for that reason. He's on the east side of Washington, <laughs> though. Um, and so, uh, shout out to Max for doing these great benchmarks. And he just released a new video today comparing the M1 Max to the to the uh, high-end Intel 16-inch MacBook Pro. And uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I'm going to be watching it later today because <laughs> I think the, the results are going to be equally as impressive, if not more. And I know most people are thinking about getting the M1 Max. I mean, I'm a Max guy. I'm going for the Max. I, I think that's pretty much true for all of us. Like, we're, we're just drawn to the Max. We're Max people. We want to have the maximum amount of performance and uh, especially if you're a video editor, you get the double ProRes enco encoders plus the extra 16 cores for the GPU. It's like, it's gonna be, uh, it's just gonna be an absolutely insane monster with all the battery life as well. Okay, let's see here. Where are we going next? I have no idea. That was a lot of specs. Oh, Lewis, I'm tossing it to you to talk about gaming because surprisingly, the MacBook Pro, the new one, is actually pretty decent at gaming too. You mean the one with all the great new powerful chips? Yeah, I mean, but you you never associate gaming with a MacBook Pro, and yet the new MacBook Pro seems like it's actually apt for gaming. Yeah, so uh, PC Mag tested gaming on the 14-inch MacBook Pro running an M1 Pro processor and a 16-core GPU, and also the 16-inch model with an M1 Max with 32-core GPU. It compared both of these to the Razer Blade 15 Advanced, which is running a... Um, Core i7 processor with a GeForce RTX 3070 GPU, which is a mouthful. Uh, anyway, uh, PC Mag described that as a you know a state of the art high end Windows gaming laptop. In case you don't know what that is, uh, so they they tested it with several games uh, when testing with Rise of the Tomb Raider with very high graphic detail. I guess that's the setting, very high graphic detail in the game. Uh, M1 Max was able to generate 116 frames per second on average compared to the Core i7's 114 frames per second, so basically on par. M1 Pro average was 79 frames per second, so not as good. Uh, on Hitman, the M1 Max had an average of 106 frames per second. M1 Pro averaged 104 frames per second, and Core i7 averaged 103 frames per second. Uh, tests include a couple other games. Apple chips didn't always win. Uh, Core i7 came out solidly ahead in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example. Uh, and PC Mag's Tom Brandt summed all this up, saying, the answer to whether or not the M1 Pro and M1 Max are good for gaming is, it depends on the game. That's a significant <laughs> triumph, triumph for Mac Silicon, since it's essentially the same answer to whether or not an NVIDIA or AMD GPU in a Windows gaming laptop is good for gaming. I, I actually, uh, you know, not being a gamer, I, I wouldn't realize that there was that much variation between which, you know, like like the, the games were tuned for specific uh, graphics processors. But uh, it, it's interesting that the, the MacBooks are, are holding their own on, on a lot of these games. Yeah, and, and it's funny. People always clown on the Mac for not being a gaming oh. machine. I, look, I totally agree with you. I have a gaming machine that we're broadcasting from right now. There's a lot of things that Macs aren't good at. But... These these are pretty respectable scores. I mean, when you when you have a gaming PC or gaming notebook PC versus the M1 Max, and the M1 Max is able to crank out 116 FPS versus the uh, i7's uh, 114 FPS, it's like, dude, uh, the Mac is doing better than the gaming PC. Like what? And someone was saying that that the uh, it doesn't matter how powerful the GPU is from the chat. I'm trying to find you, unless the studio supports the GPU. That's that's 100% true. Like, 
if the stu- if the studios actually built a game that was optimized for metal, I I think that the performance that we would see from the MacBook Pro would probably be on par across all games as an expensive GPU. But I don't think studios are probably going to do that because gaming on a Mac is usually an afterthought for studios, unless they're really really popular AAA games and they can afford to optimize for for metal. Most game studios, I would imagine, probably won't because most people aren't gaming on a Mac. But the gaming performance on the new M1 Pro, M M1 Max, MacBook Pros are, I would say, they're more than decent. I'd say they're actually good, depending on the game that you're talking about. And, and in some in some cases, great, which is a surprising thing to to be able to say about a MacBook Pro. It's no longer an afterthought. You really could could use this and get great frames per second on on a variety of AAA titles, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, okay. Not that you're going to buy a $3,000 MacBook Pro and, and game on it, but you I, could. You could. I wonder if they'll uh, they'll talk some people into making some really high high profile games for, for the new MacBooks. <laughs> you well, know, they have the whole Apple Arcade thing going, right? So they're definitely working with mm-hmm. game makers and stuff. So Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know... Apple just keeps adding games to Apple Arcade, and it's it's very similar to other game subscriptions that are going right now, like the one Xbox has. And so what would prevent Apple from luring or even just outright paying game studios to create really high-quality AAA titles for the MacBook Pro or for the I Mac? Mean, it, it's, I bet it's you they're working on it, honestly. They're doing with Apple TV Plus, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. They're, they're trying to be a, an entertainment company. That's so. exactly right, and we talked about this before. I think that people think that Apple is just focusing on on Apple TV Plus and creating their own, you know, uh, video content, their own uh, entertainment content. But I think that entertainment content it, it, it encompasses gaming. I think, and gaming is such a huge industry that I, I think that maybe Apple might be making a play for that in the future. Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Well, <clears throat> all of these great benchmarks are really good news for most people, but. <laughs> What a segue. They're not great news for everybody. <laughs> right, Ander? That's right, yeah. I was just looking at the prices for this uh, for that Razer uh, machine. Yeah. Um, and confusingly, they offer... Guess how many different variations they offer that one computer? 17. Oh, that's it? 17 different... And the prices range from about 1,700 to about 3,000, depending on the, the GPU card and the screen and the, the different uh, processor. But so price wise, I mean, I guess it's kind of equivalent to the the the, the M1. I mean, it is. It's MacBook. it's like thirty. How much was that that notebook that they tested? I think it was thirty four hundred dollars. So okay, you know, it's it's in it's in within the range of of being the same price. And Razer says it's the it's the most powerful gaming laptop you can get, which I, I don't know if that's true or not. That's what they. I don't know if that's true either. But Razer is known for building portable gaming laptops. I think they're probably yeah. one of the most recognized companies for doing that and their machines are always highly lauded so i would probably believe them when they said that everyone else seems like they're trying to copy them yeah i wonder what the battery life is on like on it i bet it's i I bet it's horrendous yeah (laughs) and if you if you unplug it's just like that graph that apple showed and if you unplug it all of a sudden the performance just absolutely tanks (laughs) it's like it's basically a portable uh desktop pc it has to be plugged in and if you want to take it somewhere it's like it's light you could take it somewhere but you better have it plugged in when uh, when you get to where you're going or that performance is not going to be there. Anyway, I'm trying to throw it to you to talk about the Intel CEO so, yeah. c- crying about <laughs> the uh, Intel per- or about the uh, the Mac performance. But he's got hope. He's going to win them back, I think. That's right. This is the Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger. It says the ball in the, uh, is in the chip giant's court to win back lost business from the Mac. Um, uh, so, uh, quote, my job is to win them back. Um, and uh, to deliver products that are, I can't even read are better than they can do themselves. My job is to win them back and deliver products better than they can do themselves. Okay, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, we also want to win them over to more of our foundry offerings over time, uh, and that just makes sense, right? Everybody wants to have multiple suppliers, and if we have the best process technology in the industry, of course, they'll come our way. Uh, and he said this at the uh, Google Yahoo Finance's All Markets Summit. So I don't, you know, uh, was there anything really, you know, uh, you know, meaty in that? Anything, you know? I guess the only just... thing that the only reason I wanted to mention it is because I found it to be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to be mean. 
I just found it to be kind of <laughs> pathetic. It's like, it's like, dude, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Like you lost, you lost her, man. She's 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 engaged. She's gonna get married now. Like she's she's moving on with her life, and and you keep thinking she's gonna come to her senses and come back to you. It's like, yeah, it's not gonna happen, dude. You gotta just move on. Find 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 someone new. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Like like the way he's like, well, my job is to win Apple back. It's like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh it's it's over man like i hate to break it to you but like <laughs> they're not coming back man like look at these performance gains they got and look at the increase in battery life i mean they've been dealing with intel for so long and look i have i have a lot of respect for intel but like what apple has been able to accomplish here i think has really rattled the industry yeah right well, it's and tsmc of course i mean you know the, 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 their partners over in taiwan are getting the, the the credit they deserve but you know this has been a long game by tsmc they've been making um, chips for other, you know, other other companies uh, as a, you know, sort of like, uh, on the kind of like the Foxconn model, you know, the the, the, su the supplier for, for for a couple of decades. And the funny thing is, is that Apple actually offered um, the iPhone to Intel, you know, way back when. They're like, do you want to make a do you want to make a chip for this? And they were like, nah, it's you know, they they couldn't make it work. Huh. Um, and and funny enough, you know, these 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 uh, M1 chips now, they're their iPhone, they're scaled up iPhone chips. So this could have been this could have been Intel's product if they'd stuck with Apple. That you know the last how many of years? It is. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> it's like when uh, Blockbuster turned down Netflix. You know, it's like one of those yeah. monumental things that uh, that that changed the industry forever. Uh, yeah, I just I just thought that the Intel saying we're gonna get them back. So you're saying we got a chance. Someone else is bringing up a uh, Dumb and Dumber reference in the chat. That's exactly what I thought of. She's like, <laughs> so you're saying I got a chance. All right. Let's before we move on, let me give a uh, a, a quick mention of a product I think you're really going to love. And if you're disappointed that you can't get Apple's overpriced performance cleaning cloth in your home anytime soon, I've got another overpriced performance cloth to tell you about. It's called Cult Cloth, the original <laughs> overpriced cleaning cloth. Cultcloth.co. I've been selling moderately overpriced, high performance cleaning cloths before. <laughs> TC ever dreamed of offering such a thing, okay? <laughs> so I take umbrage to the fact that he's copying me now. And ours are in stock, although just barely. Oh, my gosh. We have just gotten sl – so so Apple has put performance cleaning cloth into the zeitgeist. And ever since that happened, like, all of a sudden, people are like, hey, this is a good idea. I think I want a performance cleaning cloth for my MacBook Pro and my iMac and my lenses and my sunglasses. And, and I'll tell you what, inch per inch – I, I almost guarantee you our cloth is going to perform better than the Apple cloth. And they're charging $19 for one cloth. You can get like an assortment of all of our best cloths that are fitted for your hands. You're not going to actually accidentally have your hands slide off and smear your weird oils all over your screen. And, uh, <laughs> and they don't even have a cult cloth duo. You're only going to find that at cultcloth.co. This has a long fiber on one side, a short fi fiber on the other side. So that's it's my great. favorite one. I, I, I that's use the one that you clean use. My glasses this morning. Look how clean they are. Dude, they look brand new. Are those are those brand new glasses? <laughs> they are look, they what? Look, are those brand new glasses? They look brand new. Uh, no, that they're they're, um, they're about a year old. Oh, well, I couldn't tell. And yeah. Yeah. Costco. Look at that shine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see how see how clean they are. Yeah, yeah I do. I I can, I can see my own reflection in there. And the thing that I love about our cloth is like, so the Apple cloth is flat and we sell some flat cloths. And I think there's, there's situations where you want to use a flat cloth. Like we have here, this is our polishing cloth, especially if you're cleaning like, um, like a television screen or something sensitive. Uh, it's a good idea to use one of these just to make sure that there's no, uh, like debris caught up in the fibers of your, your longer pile cloth. But the thing about the duo, which I love is it has long fiber on one side. So you can use it for like heavy messes and reaching down into the crevices, like if you have an iPhone, actually in this image I'm showing, you can see this case goes around the iPhone. Well, the long fibers of the cloth duo will reach down into that crevice and pull everything out. In fact, you could feel it working when you rub the cloth on your fingertips. You could feel it grabbing on your fingertips. I don't think TC's cloth is grabbing nothing except a high price tag. <laughs> and then if you flip it over, it has a short side, which you can use to like clean your screens. There's no... Uh, there's not very many uh, long fibers to for debris to get caught in, and you can spray a little like cleaner on there, or just use a little breath. That's what I do. A little, <laughs> and then you just <laughs> wipe that thing down, and oh my gosh, <laughs> it will be sparkling clean. I mean, it will leave nothing behind but sparkling glass, metal, plastics. I use these on my lenses, my cameras, my glasses, my uh, my MacBook Pros. I mean, my TV, everything. They're just well, they are the original. The and children. 
and the pets, uh, the chickens. It brings oh, up yeah. a chicken real nice, right? Oh yeah, it will make your <laughs> chicken. You'll have the the most sparkling clean chicken you've ever seen. <laughs> it will look five years younger. Uh, I mean, most of its feathers will be gone because the coat cloth will pull all of them out, you know. But <laughs> but looks like the chicken from a razor head <laughs> <laughs> running around. <laughs> so coatcloth.co. If you want to, um, if you want to get some for yourself, you can use code coatcast at checkout, and you'll get a free polishing cloth or a free a carry cloth. Excuse me. And the the carry cloth is like a little bit thinner. It's optical grade. It's great for carrying on the go, cleaning your iPhone on the go. And you can see it's sized to actually fit the size of your hand and your iPhone screen. So it won't, you won't, your hand won't slide off and accidentally smear your screen, which happens with those cheap small cloths. Plus, all of these are made with our, uh, with our high-end fibers that go through a process to break down the surface area of the fiber, which increases the surface area, which makes them clean better. That's what makes cleaning cloths work. And be, because ours have so much uh, 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 surface area, they just pick everything up. Coldcloth.co, coldcloth.co. Oh, Lewis, let me send it to you real fast. We can talk about the giveaway real quick. You don't even need to spend any money here. See, we're just giving stuff away to people. <laughs> yeah, uh, and this week it is a pretty sweet little giveaway. We're giving away the <clears throat> Sateki Trio Wireless Charging Pad. We're giving away four of these things. These cost 120 bucks retail, uh, and they charge three devices, Apple Watch, AirPods, iPhone. And and if you take a look at them, I don't know if you can show people the uh, the thing on the website. It's it's a really cool looking charger. Uh, very it looks very Apple esque, doesn't it? Yeah, this is looks this like is uh, very sleek and minimalist for sure. Me- metal sides and uh, yeah. little, little very subtle beautiful. lights that show when it's slight. It's a little, Man, little it's bit, beautiful. Little it really is there, nice. Right? It's a good looking case. Yeah. Uh, case a uh, good looking charger. I, I I really wish I had one of these. And and it's good for travel. It comes with. Uh, uh, EU and UK adapter, right? So you can take it on the road with you, or you know, in the air, I suppose. Um, it's a great looking thing. Uh, I, I gotta, I, in fact, I gotta, gotta go in or as soon as this recording's over. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you uh, nice. I get, I get a Lewis you know, Lawless concoct a yeah, a fake name. <laughs> yeah, Lewis, Wu- Lewis Lawless. <laughs> okay, well, if you want to enter, I put a link in the uh, chat. I'll put a link in the show notes. And look, I always say this: there's a chance you could win it. There's a chance you can win it. Just go in there and enter. You might actually. Four. You might actually. We're giving away four. We get four oh, you're winners on this. And one. you're giving away four. Four. Yeah. So your I chance think, is think just of the odds. Yeah. They're good. I'll tell you that much. They're good. <laughs> no one ever wants to enter the giveaways. And uh, and I'm not saying this giveaway, but like just giveaways in, in, in general because everyone thinks that the odds are not in their favor. And I'm just saying you got a chance. You got a chance. Go in there and uh, give it a shot. The odds are, the, the, uh, may the odds be ever in your favor. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Even if you don't win, what you do get is the Cult of Mac Today newsletter, which uh, People Leander love. labors over every single day. Yeah, it, it does. Well, does except, for, except for the weekends. <laughs> of course. Uh, it takes a and, and, sometimes uh, when I forget. <laughs> <laughs> Leander, do you actually write the newsletter? Well, I put it together, yeah, and okay. I put the, do an intro. Okay. You're clearly not a subscriber. Yeah, no, I, I don't think I actually get I'm, it. I'm taking it back. Uh, well, I, I didn't know I uh, qualified to win one of these things. And uh, look. <laughs> If you're not going to give me something for free, I'm not doing any work, Lewis. <laughs> can I win one of these? Can I win one of these chargers? Let's talk. Let's talk after the show. Yeah, you can. You don't even have to sign up for that. I think you can. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. You can. Uh, Why do the that? Cult of Mac store. Yeah. You can follow us at Techie on Twitter. You know, you can do all those things. So. All right. In multiple ways to enter. Uh, I, I recommend it. This week looks like a. I mean, you know, every week is a good one. But this, this one, I, I haven't actually seen this thing in person. But I, I, I kind of, kind of want one. Okay, look, let me just address the question in the room. People keep asking, <laughs> why am I wearing a coat? It's because it's cold in here. Does it need to be said? It's well, freaking freezing killed. in here. I feel like I should have a <laughs> one of those hairless cats next to me shivering. It's just cold <laughs> in the Colt Mac Command Center, or the Colt Cast Command Center. And uh, so I'm wearing this jacket because otherwise you guys are going to see, well, let's just let's just be honest. You're going to see some, uh, some diamond level nip action. And I know some of you are into that and some of you aren't. And so I thought maybe I'd spare you all, you know, two to three inches of extended nip and just put a jacket over it. So that's why I'm wearing a jacket. It's just kind of cold in here. Uh, you can do a giveaway of coat cloth. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, the ones you want the ones that Lander used. I don't, I don't think you want those. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't want those ones. Trust me. <laughs> we could do a giveaway. of coat cloth for do. sure. We should do a coat cloth giveaway. Yeah, totally. Next time. Totally. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would I'd happily do that. 
Uh, okay, let's see here. Let's move on. Okay, we're sending it back to LK to talk about the AirPods 3. Dude, I'm actually really excited about the AirPods 3. I, I, the, the, the new look of them, they just look so much better, even if they did nothing but that. But they sound really good too, don't they? They sound awesome, yeah. They sound really, really great. They've got really got some thump, some bass. Um, you know, it kind of rumbles. You can feel it. It kind of gives you that that low, you know, in the in the in the gut here. That kind of you know, like when you stand in front of a big stack. Yeah. And it's not quite that. You know, it, it definitely they definitely have some bass. They they go a bit louder than the AirPod Pros, um, and uh, of course, you know, they don't block out all the sound, so you still get the ambient noise a little bit, which you know, in some circumstances, I think is actually a total advantage. Uh, you know, I didn't realize how much the AirPod Pros, you know, block out uh, the, you know, the outside world. I mean, they really do a, a really good job of that. Um, in fact, you know, I was wearing them when I was riding my bike uh, the other day, and uh, I'd uh, I got so accustomed to riding with the AirPods Pro, you know, that the cars coming up behind me were really startling me. Jeez. Um, but uh, you, you can you ride you know, around with you ride around with those things uh, with the noise cancellation on. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight, out of well, mind, Lewis. Out of sight, out of mind. That is crazy. <laughs> I put it in trans in transparency mode. Oh, okay. Whew. But yeah, you know, I, I don't know. You know, for cars coming up behind you, if you're going to get nailed, you're going to get nailed. I don't think hearing it coming is going to do you any good. Really? Because be I honest. feel like that would make a world of difference. <laughs> it's like, uh oh, here comes a bus. I better swerve. <laughs> <laughs> Into the yeah. Well, that's the thing. You know, uh, by that time it's it probably too late. But uh, I yeah, also these are, and because they have. Oh, anyway, so I, I was just—I was just to say real quick, like it, looking at you head on here, the, the thing that's most noticeable to me is you can't even see them in your head. Like that's—that's that's the big difference. Like if you look at Leander right now, unless he turns his head, you can't even see that they're in his ears, and that's a huge—that's a—that's a huge upgrade over the freaking dorky AirPods that are <laughs> sticking out. And everyone always has them sticking out every which way, and no matter how you put them in, they always get shifted around. So one's up, one's pointed down. Yeah. And those are way more sporty. They're sleeker, and they 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 just aesthetically they just are a world better. Sorry, Leander, yeah, go no, ahead. So they stay in. I, th I thought they were kind of you know at, at first I thought they weren't they were a bit uh, they weren't very well in my ears because I'm so used to jamming the um, the pros into the ear canal, and they these kind of sit on the edge of the ear. You know, they just hook in there, but they they they, they stay. You know, they they totally stay put. They they're not going anywhere. I mean, you know, like I said, I was on the bike with them, and um, there's a pretty stiff wind down by Ocean Beach, and I've lost the glasses off my face. It's actually blown the glasses off my face. Wow! It wasn't quite that strong, but these these didn't move at all. I I was really surprised. You know, and people... the fit is good. You know, the yeah, so good. Well, the fit's great. You know, I, 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 they're kind of lighter. Like sometimes with the pros, you know, the silicone tips they can make your ears a bit sweaty. Um, uh, or irritate your ears a little bit yeah, sometimes. You know, these ones definitely don't do that. They're so, the, the, the touch is so light that there's no irritation at all. Well, people keep asking about the fit, and that's one of those things. It's just, it's just the way AirPods are, right? Like, if they fit you, you love them. And if they don't fit you, then you then you are like, oh, why don't these have the silicone tips? Like, I hate the silicone tips. And for the longest time, you guys probably remember me complaining, like, I please don't put silicone tips on the <laughs> AirPods. You're going to ruin them if you do that. The reason that people love them is because situational awareness, you can have them in your ears and still hear everything around you without needing noise cancellation or uh, uh, transparency mode, I should say. But the thing is, is like they fit my ears perfectly. It sounds like Leonard and I have similar sized ear holes because <laughs> they fit my <laughs> ears perfect. But like someone in the chat was saying, I, Justine, like didn't like them because they were too big for her tiny little ear holes. Well, you know, that's that's a complaint that people have. I saw another person say that his, his ear holes were just too big. He's got giant ogre ear holes. <laughs> And they would literally just <laughs> fall out of his ear. He'd put them in his ear, and it would just go boop, and it would just literally just fall out. So if, if you have, you know, Hulk-sized ear holes, then they're not going to work for you. If you have if you have Justine ear holes, they're not going to work for you. And I, I really do wish they fit everyone perfect. But for those of you that for those of us that they do fit right, they're just the best fitting headphones that or earphones that I have ever used. I can I can leave them in my ear. They're the only earphone that I can leave in my ear for literally an eternity and I just forget that they're even there. I, I fall asleep with them in and slept on my pillow and they were still in my ears and they still my ear hole still felt nice. What about you, Lewis? Do you got <laughs> tiny little uh, something tells me you got tiny little ear canals. Is that true? <laughs> just little tiny ones. Uh, you know, I've I don't go around comparing my <laughs> ear hole size. Uh I, I definitely like the way that the AirPods 2 work. I mean I I use those probably ninety five percent of the time. I only wear the pro ones when I'm uh working out or on an airplane. So 
I, I, I had bought the three, but I, I feel, I, I almost feel like running out to the store and getting some because oh, I, I do, I do love that sort of open air feeling. Cause you know, I mean, a lot of times I walk around the house with, you know, just one in my ear. Right. And I'm listening to a podcast and talking to the wife or not talking to the wife, you know, who knows? I, 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 we both work from home now, right? Everybody works from home. So yeah, I don't, I don't like wearing the the pros nearly as much as I like the AirPods too. And, and honestly, there's, they're starting to, they're starting to not work as well anymore. I think the battery's getting dead a little bit faster. And uh, I've had some weird the, things happen lately where uh, like if I turn it a certain way, it doesn't like, it gets really quiet. Huh. I don't know if maybe I'm going deaf. I don't know what it is. That's mm. to say, I, I, I haven't heard about it. Turn it out this way, you mean like turn it this way out of your ear? <laughs> yeah, you I guess you know, like if it's if it's just slightly off center, right? I mean, and I and then I like reposition it, and oh, there it is, it's back on. But it's it's not well, like maybe it's maybe it's the sensor. Maybe the sensor's cutting it off. Well, it's it's not off. It's just quieter. I don't know. Maybe well, I've got. I you know. know what? I I haven't uh, I haven't had the nerve to actually look. Maybe there's a giant ball of wax in there. I need one of those little uh, <laughs> AirPods. Washing machine things. <laughs> I, I, you need I to get some of those drops that you can of it. put in your ears, and it like liquefies all the wax, and just see Ugh. if that see, see if that if that works. Ugh. Or you need to get yourself some Q-tips from Costco, man. That that's what I do. Like, I pride myself on my impeccably cleaned ears. And like sometimes someone turns their head, and it's like, <laughs> oh, there's like a cavern full of yellow crust in their ear. There, uh, there are a few things in life that gross me out more than that. And I'm like, I I decided early in life, like that's never gonna be me. I have I bought the freaking Q-tip industrial size box, and uh, I I get that thing in there. I've touched my brain a couple times, Ooh. and lost yeah, all bowel control. But uh, but usually I'm pretty careful. I just do a nice little nice little twist and wiggle, I then I get that, that thing out of there, and it's like I hate that. You don't like it? Oh, I think it feels so nice. It's like a little ear canal massage. Ooh. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful, right? Because you don't want to poke. But uh, you get that thing in there nice, just move it around just right. It's like, ooh, it's like when you get the floss in between your teeth just nice, just right, and you can, like, move it back and forth, and it kind of feels like a, like a little gum massage. And actually, I went to the dentist one time, and he's like, you have really nicely massaged gums. They're nice and pink and plump. I was like, oh, I massage them. Thanks, that little... I guess. <laughs> was yeah, and he started breathing heavy. He's like, ah, yeah. What do you say about your ears? <laughs> your ears look like next just time, the right next size. Next time, I'll, I'll give them a... <laughs> Look at that ear hole. It's perfect. Goldilocks ears. <laughs> it's the perfect ratio. Uh, all right. Where were we going with this? No, we're good. So they sound fantastic. They're comfortable. Battery They're life is great. Six and a half hours I got out of it the first time. Wow. You know, that the was one... with no... Huh? I was going to say, the one thing you didn't mention is they also have MagSafe compatibility now, and the price yeah, is cheaper. Yeah. So they actually yep. snap to a MagSafe charger, which is handy. Yep, 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 yep. And Twenty with the cheat charger, and, yeah. And so you you're comparing these mostly to the pros, right? I mean, do, do you have AirPods too? Do you ever wear those or? I uh, I don't. I haven't worn those for for a long time. And so, I don't have those. So you're basically comparing them to the pros, and you say they sound better than the pros. Well, they sound they're equivalent to the pros. I don't know if good. they sound better, but they're they're kind of definitely on par as a pro. The pro ones, you know, you can because of the silicone tips, it, the the sound is much more in your head. In your ears, um, this one they you know they sound as they are. They're sort of you know sitting on the edge of your your ear canals. They sound great, but you know the pros ones that they seal off, and it's definitely much more an immersive experience. Um, and uh, but these are good. You know these are I, I would say on par with the pros. The sound and, quality. And and you were saying that the the design is almost identical, right? I mean, except for the tips. Yeah. And the size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've read some different things. Like some people say, oh, the stems are shorter, but I, I, I've never really actually. Uh, I think they're almost I, exactly I mean, they're, the same. Right? They're for sure shorter than the oh. AirPods too, right? But yeah, they're definitely shorter. But I think they're almost exactly the same as the as the pros. Yeah. I can't, I can't actually hold them. They they're kind of slippery to leels. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun watching that's you what, try though. That's what we're looking for. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's basically, it's very it's, similar, if not. Yeah, is it, it looks exactly pretty much identical. Yeah. Almost, it's like, it's like the, the head, I think, is a, just a, is a little bit of a tiny different shape. The, yeah. The pros, are, the head is just a bit bigger. Yeah, and, and they weigh like, you know, a, a tenth of a gram less or something I read somewhere. Some Michael Scott yeah, joke some, in there somewhere. But then, but then the case is smaller, right? 
I heard yeah, the case, case is just, smaller than the just tiny, yeah. which is kind of odd since they look like they're the same size. This is the Pro case, and this is the the new AirPods 3 case. Well, that one looks like it's uh, yeah, you got yours in, in a, a case. In a fancy well, I can't case really case. compare it. Just a little mm. bit smaller. It's a little bit less wide, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's huh. a similar, so almost the same thing. Well, it's even, actually, it's a bit slimmer, too. Well, I, I don't want to belabor this. the point, but that thing's in a case. Yeah, you got your probably add some thickness. You got your AirPods Pro <laughs> case in a case. There we go. Okay, now we're talking. Now yeah, that's a comparison. Eat your heart out, Verge. It's like a hair <laughs> thicker, right? So they, they made uh, it slightly smaller. That, that's good. I mean, yeah, it looks noticeably smaller to me. Definitely, definitely narrower. The case but of I mean, the uh, AirPods wise, Three versus AirPods Pro. Close. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, they're nice. One hundred seventy-nine dollars. Uh, it's a total steal. Really, really good. You know, yeah, man. headphones. What, I, I really want do, them too. What do you do with old AirPods, though? I mean, I just, that's I, what I was thinking it's, too. It seems like the kind of thing that you want to hand to somebody. Here, have my old used you earbuds. You sell them on on eBay, man. People oh, God, people really? buy them on eBay. Yeah, yeah, they will. Do they? Yes, they do. I mean, people oh. people who don't want to spend full price, they'll they'll buy all sorts of weird used stuff on eBay. The only thing is, like, if you have one that's like <laughs> dying, like I do, like one of the one of the one of my AirPods, my original AirPods. The battery life on one of them is really bad because that was the one I always used to use solo. And so yeah. it's like, well, what do you do with that? Do I just throw them away? I don't really want to do that. They still work. I you think, think if you can send them into works. Apple, they'll recycle them for free. I well, think we will yeah. buy them. Um, there's also that. The Mac. Really? There's also that. Uh, well, what's the name of it? There's, I can't remember what it's called. Pod Fresh or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. There's that the service you send them in and get them uh, You can send them to Pod Swap. But, but do you want to spend $70 to renew your the batteries in your AirPods 1? You know what no, I, mean? I just want to go ahead and get the AirPods. Yeah, free. it doesn't but, make and, any sense. Yeah, I mean, you could certainly do that if you don't want to buy new AirPods. I think that's a way, that's a good way to 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 reset the, the 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 life of your AirPods. But and it's a cheaper way to do it than rather than just buying the new AirPods. But like the new AirPods are pretty nice. Like, wouldn't you rather just spend the extra money and get the new yeah. AirPods? It's like, yeah, I kind of would. Dang it! You know what I mean? More money <laughs> out the window. Okay, look, we're we're pressing up against the end here. Um, I should say, yeah, I, I, I want to give a quick plug for the buyback program. We we um, you know we'll buy back old AirPods. Yeah, just send them to the Leander and if he likes everything them. else, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> send, you send it in a, a, a Manila envelope to, to Leander Katie, <laughs> San Francisco. That'll just it'll show up at his. And then door. You just wait, you'll get an envelope for just full of money. <laughs> Unmarked no, you gotta do bills. It to this, do it to the site. <laughs> what's the what's the URL, Leander? Do you remember? Buyback.cultofmac.com. Buyback.cultofmac.com. And then you want to go to other. There's a on the bottom right hand corner, other. Um, yeah, we buy back AirPods Pro at you know the second generation, the, the first generation AirPods Max beats a lot. We buy back all kinds of crap. Watches. <laughs> I don't know if that's a phone, phone, We'll literally buy your MacBooks. crap from you. It's like, <laughs> how much do you want? We'll buy it. Buyback.com. Well, I mean, it's just, yeah. you know, it's it's not just AirPods, is what I'm saying. All sorts of all your Apple gear technology. and some other stuff that's not even Apple gear, so. All right, hey, just before we move on, quick mention. I wanted to give a, uh, a plug to uh, my old power burner OS for uh, for coming out with a new line of iconic pillows from the Apple ecosystem of uh, pillows that resemble, um, you know, Apple machines that you may recognize that are definitely not Apple branded, so they don't violate copyright, but um, they look like machines from apple's past his uh his first line of icon pillows were hugely popular i know a lot of you probably have have seen them and he just uh launched a new kickstarter which is already funded oh my gosh look at that he's already at seventeen thousand dollars i i think i just refreshed this it just went from like fifteen thousand to seventeen thousand so Sheesh. and it, this is day one and, so and I, he, I can think af- he can afford new airpods yeah he's getting new airpods He's getting, his, he's, getting, he's, he's not recycling the, uh, the the version ones with the new batteries, and it, and he's got some early birds here still. So this is the best time to buy if you want to get these at a lower price. Then now is when you want to do it because the early bird prices are lower than the regular prices. So if you want to get yourself some pillows that will look great on your couch, your bed, if you're a huge Apple fan, then you definitely want to consider getting some Throwboy pillows. And these are the original too. I mean, Roberto's been doing this gal since. 2007 i think i mean and then Mm. everyone started copying him but his are actually really high quality and creative you know he went through a lot of work and i say look at all that detail wow look at all the ports yeah yeah 
they look much better than most of the garbage that you find out there because he actually puts like creative work into these. So uh, it's on Kickstarter. Um, I'll post a link in the chat and in the show notes if you want to check them out. Now's the time to get them before they, they go up in price. And uh, you could probably learn more, more on throwboy.com. I'm guessing he probably has it there, but I haven't looked. So maybe use the link. Yes, Leander, I can hear you getting ready to say something. <laughs> you can hear me? <laughs> I can we hear your, your say... larynx preparing to do something. You're like, ooh. ooh, ooh. I was I like, Lewis, we should stop. give a shout out. Shout out to that guy that wrote us that nice email. Ed oh, Choi. yeah. Right. Thank you for yeah, reminding Ed, me. You're listening? Made us a, it was a great email that kind of warmed the cockles of our hearts. Yeah. It, it, it was very, very kind. And it, it was cool to hear that um, the show brings some levity to your life. And you know, it's funny. I am um, reading his email. I could think of times where the podcast that I listened to helped me get through some times that were difficult because it was just a, a welcome distraction. So it was very cool getting your email and, and, and getting to know that we have been able to do that for some other people too. So let's see here. Last story of the day. I just wanted to touch on this. Okay, so you guys may have seen that Amazon is preparing, or maybe they just did. Do I have this story up? Hold on a second. Let me find it. Is preparing to release a new television. And it's like an Amazon-made television. Let me just copy this and, and post that in here. And not only are they making a new television, but the television is going to support HomeKit. Here we go. It's going to support HomeKit or uh, 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 AirPlay, excuse me. And um, so you'll be able to stream stuff to it, and it's going to support Apple TV+. And I was just thinking to myself, what the hell is <coughs> TC doing? This is what we need. We need an Apple, an actual Apple television. I mean, you have Amazon making one. And I've got to wonder if Apple will ever actually do this. Remember our old pal Genie Munster? He used to say, oh, it's it's incoming. It's it's incoming. It's any day now. We're going to get an Apple television. We used to talk about this all the time. And all we ever got was the Apple TV, the one that we that we have now. And, and I love the Apple TV. But it feels incomplete. And the thing is, is like Apple has already completely changed the landscape of, of screen technology, right? Especially with this mini LED technology they're bringing into their, their, uh, their iPads and the MacBook Pro, they're already making screens. And the screens have True Tone, which adjusts the color balance dynamically, which is something that no other TV does. And Auto Brightness, which is something that most other TVs don't do. And they already have amazing contrast. They have the fast 120 hertz refresh rates. Why is Apple not creating an actual Apple television? This seems like the next thing. I mean, aside from changing the name of from Apple to uh, something clever like uh, like VRverse, which I think would be hugely beneficial for their business, right? <laughs> this could be another good move for them: is to create an actual Apple television that that has the Apple TV uh, uh, console tech built into it, but has the screen prowess, the screen technology tech that Apple has polished and honed over the last. I don't know how many years of, of, of Mac and iPhone development and bring it to an actual television. I feel like this would crush. This would absolutely crush. They would, they would, is anyone, yeah, go is, ahead. Is anyone making those panels big enough for a TV? Those OLED panels? Yeah, I mean, LG is, and LG sells their panels to Sony. So Sony uses the LG panels to make their own TV, which is even better than the LGs, how funny enough. So, so. <laughs> they use their own. Panels, huh? No, Sony doesn't make panels, o OLED panels. They they just use LGs. I think everyone uses LGs OLED panels. Well, that may be an overstatement, but the higher end TVs certainly do. And then OLED has or uh, LG has their TV, and the Sony TV actually looks better because their motion engine is better and their color rendition is better than the LG. So there you go. Apple could take the technology that already exists, and that's what I'm saying. They're already doing this in the iPhone, in the iPad. They're not making those actual displays themselves they're just making them better through technology and i just kept thinking so i got a new tv recently i got an uh, an l an lg c1 OLED, and it's it's nice but there are some things about it that i don't like like the white balance sometimes seems like it's off and i was like it seems like apple could release a tv that would auto adjust the white balance true tone so that you don't have to mess with it and it would make the picture look better 
And then sometimes the TV is too bright. Like when I turn the lights down and it doesn't, it doesn't automatically adjust the brightness, at least as far as I can tell. And I don't even know if that TV has that technology built in. And I'm like, how does it not have this technology built in? I mean, as far as I can tell, it doesn't because my iPhone for the last hundred years has had this technology. So Apple already has all this stuff figured out. Like why couldn't they just wrap off well, all this great technology talk- into a TV? They talked about it. I think TC was on record recently saying that they talked about a TV but discounted it. He didn't say why. The only thing I could think of is that there's so much competition in the TV space that the profit margins are just not there for Apple. That's well, the, yeah, right. that's the pro- only thing I could think of. Did you see the pricing on this these Amazon ones? No. How much are they? I mean, 75-incher with Dolby Vision, 1099 Wow. So but you, you know what? Eight twenty nine. Not, not near two thousand. Just a thousand. Just over a thousand dollars. One thousand ninety nine dollars. Wow. Yeah. Eleven hundred. For seventy five inch TV. Yeah. Leander's <laughs> like, uh, what website's that? I'm gonna yeah. go right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and on yeah, Prime I mean... Day, it'll be like seventy five dollars. <laughs> so yeah. 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 Um, we've got a perfectly good TV. I'm just gonna stick with it. So <laughs> although I'll... I do like the sound. Of... <laughs> it's nice. I mean, it's got Amazon built in. 75 inches. They wouldn't have to compete on the lower end of the market. They could clearly come in higher. I mean, the LG TVs are not cheap. And the Sony TVs are even more expensive. I mean, a 65-inch Sony is full price, maybe $2,400. So that seems like there's some area in there to app for Apple to come in and say, well, we're going to do something similar and, and make it even better with all of our cool screen technology that we have built into Mac and, and iPhone stuff. Anyway, just a thought. I just think well, the, it's weird the, that the Amazon's doing it and, and Apple's not. Well, Apple's got the content now, too. I mean, like the, if they did do an Apple TV, the thing they would want to do is make sure when you turn it on, it goes to the Apple TV interface. Yeah. You know, so it gives you their offerings first. Then you got to, like, you know, instead of – so then, then you'd have to click out to go to your cable provider or to your PlayStation or whatever, you know, to, to choose a different input. Um, I mean, it would be a good way to showcase all their stuff, wouldn't it be, on Apple TV? TV Plus. Yeah, and, and to uh, dial in the experience. I mean, they have all of this great technology built into Apple TV programming. I mean, I think their tech, their their programming looks better than virtually everyone else's, honestly. And they have like all the latest technology built in. That's like Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, uh, virtualized surround. I mean, it's just all in there. Whereas other services like Netflix and stuff make you pay extra for that stuff. It's all included in all of their content for five bucks a month, which is like an insane deal. And then you build a TV that's like built around giving the best experience for for that type of for that type of content. I I just think it's a great idea, and we would all yeah, be interested in it. Chip in it, it could be a gaming console too. Oh shoot! There you go. It's also a gaming console. Just you don't even need a console. It it it, it is the gaming console. A couple that's of HomePods I... welded onto the corners. If only they had not discounted <laughs> HomePods. Oh man, maybe bring back the HomePods and and a surround sound system. I think that would have been another. Thing that they could have probably made money on. I mean, I, again, the thing is, is I know they can make money on it, but would Apple make enough money? Would they? Would because they, they like to enter b- big ecosystems and then and then sell huge volumes? Could they make enough selling a TV? Could they make enough selling a, a surround sound right, system? Right, maybe not. Profit margin, yeah, yeah, yeah. M- maybe not because I think that the profit margins on TVs are are pretty low, and it's hyper competitive. Like a, a TV that costs twenty four hundred dollars will one year later be selling for thirteen hundred dollars. So, which is one of the reasons I just bought mine. I got a crazy deal on it. I got a 65-inch OLED. I think when they when they came out, the C1 65-inch was was $2,400, and I just got it for $1,500. So, it's like, it's not even a year after it's, it was released. So, the prices tank quick. So, maybe TC's like, uh-uh, y'all. That's not my market. All right, guys. <laughs> it's one thirty-eight. Oh, man. How long, how long get off to the going? earnings call, man. It's going to be as exciting as Dune. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. You think so? I don't <laughs> Did you watch Dune? Watched half of it. How was it? Lost interest. Yeah. No, Lost didn't, interest. didn't do it for you, huh? A little bit of a slow burn. So, see, that's what I think I'm going to like about it is the fact that it's going to be a slow burn and it's really super long. Like, and and I like content like that. Like Blade Runner 2049, I, that's exactly why I love it. It's long. It's got a slow burn. Some people say boring. I say slow burn. It gets, it, it's going somewhere. It just takes a while to get there. And the journey is what you're going it. through. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, oh, man, it took four hours. But, boy, that was that was it. Relaxing four hours. Uh, I quite liked it. My kids hated it, but you know what? I I uh, I liked even better was the the David Lynch one. I went and I went and watched a little bit of the David Lynch one. You're afterwards. kidding? Huh? No, I thought it was wow. really good. Where did you it's even see that weirder. one? Where Where did you even watch that one? 
Which one? The David Lynch one? Yeah, like that that was the one from nineteen ninety four or something. something. Yeah. Okay. It's free on I don't know, it was free on some on something, or something on one of the on yeah. piratebay.org. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's, on, it's on it's on like uh, one Got of the it. services you know. I mean it's, I, ancient. I think it's on Xfinity. Um, you know, did you say you watched it after? You you watched the entire new Dune and then you went and watched <laughs> some <laughs> of the original Dune? Because I went down a Doom rabbit hole, you know. No like, wonder I, he didn't I, have time to put out the newsletter. <laughs> How did you stay awake? I thought it was pretty good, you know. I, <laughs> I, I thought the Villeneuve one, the new one's kind of a little bit overrated. Um, it wasn't, the, you know, visually it's stunning, but the David Lynch one's much weirder, much stranger. Huh. That's just a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I know, big surprise. Um, you know, Villeneuve's is kind of, you know, it's 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 fairly straightforward, isn't it? You know, and and and, and if you don't like Timothée, and if you don't like josh brolin and stuff you know i can see how people get irritated by it and it does kind of go on a little bit and it is a little bit murky about what's going on and what people's motives are and i could understand half the dialogue in fact we had to there was so much whispering we had to turn it up you know to, to hear the whispering yeah and then of course it nearly blew the windows out of the house you know when the when the hans zimmer score comes on so my wife was like complaining about she kept on coming in isn't that the worst thing you know when you get those cinema conditions at home, you know you, you close the doors you cl- close the curtains you turn off the lights and then, you know, 10 minutes later, your wife bursts in and says it's too loud and completely ruins the whole thing. And you so, have to turn it down and you can't hear a single thing. Like, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy anyway, part yeah. is, is, like, seeing – it's just so weird to see how Dune is in theaters, but then it's also on HBO Max. Oh, and it's, it's, that's awesome. You know what's funny is, like, I haven't even watched it on HBO Max. I have been saving it because I, 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 this is such an epic – an epic movie. I want to go see it in the movie theater, and I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it by seeing it in HBO Max. So you must have watched what it in HBO Max. Television. I know, I know, but but even still, you know, like seeing something in the movie theater. It's been such a long time since I've even been in the movie theater. I would, I think yeah, for something I, like that, I would probably just wait. I don't want but... someone coughing COVID in my face, you know. So, jeez. <laughs> oh, the, 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 there's no one in the movie theater now, anyway. So now is a great time to see yeah. a movie because everyone's like scared to go there. So like you're going to be like one of ten people in the movie theater. So right, that was a great right. time to go. Yeah, I heard that. You know I heard I mean? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go probably go see the Bond movie at the movie theaters. You'll go see Bond, but not Dune. I know it's a bit. I know it's all messed up. You're I know right. it's. You're, I know. You're, you're, I know. you're far too British. You're British. That's the feeling. kids. You know, it's, it's the kids. It's what the kids is. That's what the kids want. <laughs> all right. Shout out to Dom Lopez. Papa E's here, but he's hungry. So I think it's time to get that music going. And uh, start start our sign off process. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. I think that's all the cult casts we have for you guys. It's like, what, what, what are we at? Freaking two hours or something? I don't even know anymore. It's like a Dune movie. It's like almost four hours long. <laughs> all right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up there. That's all the cult casts we have for you guys this week. Hey, we're all on Twitter. If you want to come say hi, I'm at Airfon. Leander is at L Candy Lewis. <laughs> Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. This is the cult cast. The best thirty plus minute apple conversation you're gonna hear all week long. New episodes of cult cast come out. Every Thursday night, I almost motorboated this thing. Well, thank everyone for listening. (laughs) We'll see you guys next time. Where's the end button? You want to see that motorboat again, Lewis? Please, no. (laughs) Be the eye bleach. You motorboating son of a gun. All right. I was like, we got to wrap it up because, look. I'll be honest. I'm like a 9 out of 10 on the uh, I need to urinate now scale. (laughs) And if I wait any longer, I'm not going to be upright by the time this show's over. People are loving Dune in the chat. Lewis, I think you need to give another chance. Yeah, you know, like I said, I watched half, so I just ran out of steam. (laughs) Was it the first half or the last half? (laughs) <laughs> it was, I just I watched like the middle, middle, the middle half. See, that's the problem. You watched the middle, the middle half and then you stopped. <laughs> I don't trying. like the exposition. I don't like the ending. Yeah. I just, just give me just the, give me the middle. talk in the middle. The middle's all I need. <laughs> and I realize I don't even know what's going on in this movie. It doesn't make any sense. How do people like this? Let's try it from the start next time. All right. I'm Should hovering my cursor over towards the end stream button. I've had enough. Enough for one week. My um, the quick time didn't work. Hold on. Here it goes. We're stopping it right now. Bye.